I thought it was really entertaining with like the guy in the background, but it was also really educational. I think I learned a lot. Yeah, it was fun. We liked how when you asked them the question, they actually answered. But to actually see and talk to somebody that's an astronaut in space, it's incredible. Hello, Key Peninsula Middle School. This is the International Space Station Expedition 18. Mike and Sandy here. We can hear you loud and clear. Can you hear us? We do hear you. And we're ready for the questions. Space Station, we're honored to be speaking with you today. We've also got students from Peninsula High School, Harbor Ridge Middle School, and Vaughn Elementary School. We're here at Galaxy Uptown Theater in Gig Harbor. You'll be talking to the next generation of explorers here. So thank you so much for sharing your day with us. And our students are really anxious to get started. Presentation like this, there's some fabulous people that are involved in this organization. They get these high-powered people in here, at, like Bonnie Dunbar, and to get the astronauts out on the space station. This is such a phenomenal thing for this area. The people here, I don't know if they realize what they have. We believe philosophically that a movie theater should first be a social icon in the community it serves. So with our capability as a multi-presentation facility to address all kinds of avenues, we chose as our, as our main focus, if you will, educational issues. I'm Tara and this question is for Mike. Is it hard to sleep strapped into the sleeping bag aboard the ISS? Sarah, that's a great question, and uh, we do sleep uh, strapped to sleeping bags, and our sleeping bags are strapped to the wall. That way we don't float away while we're sleeping. That's really important. Uh, but no, it's a really comfortable sleep here in space because we're just floating. We don't have any pressure points, but I do miss my pillow. The response was, I can't believe what I just saw. I mean, that was just one of the coolest things they've ever been a part of. I mean, I, I don't know anybody who's talked to anybody in outer space before. By simply leveraging the technology that this theater already had, we were able to do something that wouldn't have been possible otherwise. And so, um, you know, already you're able to see uh, kids have the capacity to talk to people who are up in space. And uh, I think it's, it's only the beginning of things that we'll see down the road where new horizons are, are, uh, are brought forth for our kids. I'm Brad, and my question is for Sandra. What has been the most significant or possibly dangerous effect microgravity has on the human body? The most noticeable effects that we have is the fact that up here, for some reason we're, again, still trying to understand is the, the minerals, the calcium especially, that leaks out of our bones, and our bones can become very brittle. Without the technology, we can't do this. This is one of the, probably the only place in Gig Harbor where we can seat 2,000 people at one time and do an audio video presentation of this caliber. We believe with these, this capability, we can directly uh, address and effectively try to add to the quality in the communities we serve. It, it allows the public to see what we're doing in the schools in terms of educating our kids and also uh, provides them with an opportunity to understand that in order to not only motivate kids and have them um, plan for the future, they need to actually uh, participate in practical events such as this. We've been working with NASA for about six years now, uh, using kind of NASA as a tool to engage teachers and the community and staff. So this really made sense to do it with Galaxy. But what it does is allows us to connect anything with a video source pretty much a signal out and throw it onto the screen. So whether it's high definition TV, whether it's uh, uh, Blu-rays or DVDs or your computer laptop or you know, a, a video gaming system, um, you bring it to me, I can, I can hook it to that projector and I can throw it on the screen. And that's something you can't do with 35 millimeter projectors. Well, for one thing, it brings all the kids from the different schools and the different communities together. So we get to all be involved, we all come together and Part of the whole NASA thing too is just the science aspect. Everyone who's interested in science gets to be, you know, come on board. And it was free to the public. So there's a lot of the public here too. It's awesome. Really glad you could join us aboard the space station. And you'll have to remember that Sandy and I were, were kids once too. And we had dreams and we're living our dreams today. 
it was exciting to see over 1,200 people attending. Uh, we had it on 10 screens, providing free educational content to as wide and broad an audience as we could, far wider, far brighter, uh, broader than just at the school level. The theater can be a hub for a community. Um, it's a very communal experience, and we saw that with the NASA Uplink, where the community came together, literally hundreds of people, to share in an experience. It's not unlike when we go see a movie. You know, it is the one moment in our lives where we dream collectively, where the lights go down and we all share the same dream. And that's true when it comes to going to the cinema and seeing a film, but it's also true when it comes to some of these public-private partnerships where we're doing new and unique and innovative things talking with the space station or whatever is still to come. I'm really excited about that. I think that's good for our community to have those sort of collective experiences. And I'm excited about what comes next. You have to study hard and you have to work hard, but uh, and, and follow your dreams and never give up. And you know, it's a land of opportunity and you'll be able to do whatever you want. The station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you.